Yesterday, I said it had been too long since Ted Nugent had been on the broadcast, and I guess they heard that as uh, his uh, media people called us and said, hey, he's ready to come on. And man, the story he's got to tell, it just fits into the massive censorship of libertarian and conservative ideas in this country and the reign of terror of political correctness. They have decided to go full bore. I have two articles, one from Washington State and one from Washington, Pennsylvania. Strangely enough, I noticed that looking at the articles, one out of ABC News, one out of CBS News, the one out of Pittsburgh, they sent a political correct operative in there, a woman to a barber shop and said, do my hair. And they said, we don't have the equipment to do your hair. There's a women's salon down the street. So she went to the government, they find them. And just like the folks that won't bake the cake for the gay people, they'll end up in jail if they don't submit to it. So he said, I, I guess I'll get the equipment and the hair rollers and all the rest. I mean, barber shops are for men because you want to be in there 10 minutes. I've gone to barber shops most of my life. I want to go in. I want to get my hair cut. I want to be gone in 15 minutes. I don't want to get my hair cut over 45 minutes an hour. And you've got salons that are for women. I mean, there are salons where there's nothing but women. It has nothing to do with putting women down. But that's indicative of the war on just being male. When they say we're going to ban the word father or mother, boy or girl, he or she, they mean business. And this is the takedown of civilization we're witnessing and, and turning people just against themselves where being married or having children is fundamentally a crime. We're having a single family dwelling is a crime under world treaty, Agenda 21, where half the roads are turned into robot roads in the next five to 10 years. And then they're going to phase them all out. That was announced in the LA Times yesterday. Of course, I told you this 20 years ago. We're here. They're making their move to destabilize things and consolidate power. I have a stack of news here where they are waging war on the family and our very biology. Hillary Clinton says she's sorry about the private email. Use. We're going to play that clip. Trump has come out and said, we have to accept migrants here from Syria because they're, quote, in a hell. But nobody else has to. Not Saudi Arabia. Not any of these countries. And, of course, he's trying to score politically correct points now that he's the front runner. And that's what I've been worried about with Trump is that once he starts getting closer to the election, he'll moderate towards the Democrats. Well, if the Democrats want to commit national suicide, we, we you can't moderate dragging a double-edged dagger across your arteries. You can't moderate jumping off a thousand-foot cliff without a parachute. You can't moderate things like this. This is designed to suicide the West, and I don't even mean racially. It's designed to suicide us with balkanization, Tower of Babel, divide and conquer, Cloward and Piven bankruptcy. So that's all coming up today as well. And then I saw this on local news yesterday. It's now national news. Two football players in high school spear the referee and then afterwards said it's okay, he was racist with no proof. Monday through Friday, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central, we're here live. It's InfoWars Live. I'm your host, Alex Jones. We return weeknights, 7 o'clock Central, with the InfoWars Nightly News. Then Sundays, 4 to 6 p.m. with the abbreviated live broadcast, 4 to 6 p.m. Central. World Bank Chief Economist warns the private run-for-profit Federal Reserve to delay rate rise. 
Peter Schiff says everybody's got it wrong. They're not going to raise the rates. He says they're going to leave them the same. I tend to agree with him. All the indicators show that, especially with China further devaluing their currency and beginning to dump U.S. Treasuries. Upwards of $115 billion in the last week. That is only going to make the Federal Reserve want to continue to race to devalue as well, in my opinion. Obviously, anything's possible with these globalists. They throw so many curveballs. They could do a mix, too. They've been talking about giving central banks free money still with 0% interest, but then raising it for the public in the prime interest rate. So that's probably what you're going to see. In fact, we've kind of already seen that, really where from what I've seen in the business publications, talking to business people, talking to private individuals, credit started to go up in a lot of sectors. Interest rates have been going up. So I think I kind of just answered our own question right there. Uh, Hillary has said she's sorry for illegally having secret emails. Well, why did the head of the EPA have to stand down two years ago when she got caught using secret ones? Because it violates the National Security Act and it violates the Freedom of Information Act, the Open Records Act, three acts. They're all felonies. She now says that it was a mistake in an interview on ABC News. Donald Trump has made a shocking statement. We have to accept migrants here because they're living in hell in Syria. There are people living in hell all over the world. I don't have to accept them or pay for them. If I want to give money to dig wells in Africa, or I want to give money to the Heifer Project, as I've been given for more than 12 years, to buy cows for African villages, or if I want to buy medical tables and, 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 and medical beds for people in Central America, which I've done, and if I want to give money to the Salvation Army, which I've done, I mean, I don't talk about my charity, but I'll go ahead and talk about it. I don't tithe to churches, establishment whorehouses. If I found a good church, I would. There are some good ones out there. I tithe directly to charities that I know give upwards of 85%, that's a good metric, to the actual people with no strings attached. I have to go do major research that they're not forcing inoculations or they're not focusing a particular socialist worldview attached to that money you're giving to then politically take over those areas. You want to give money, give it to Salvation Army. So I give way more money than probably anybody statistically that I know of and I do it because I have a job to do that if I'm for low taxes and if I'm for a small government then I'm supposed to give and that's what built this country and so I actually try to help people I'm not, in fact if I started trying to get into all the charity I've given all the organizations I've been involved in and you know the sponsoring of children and all the rest of it the problem is it's a minefield to not have your money used to basically put them into a psychological and spiritual prison. Because, yeah, they'll buy them breakfast and shoes. But then are you getting the full story of what happens with those charities? That's something I've been wanting to do is do research on charities. Nobody's perfect. No charity's perfect. But to try to create basically a section on the side of charities that we've researched and that we believe are some of the better charities. United Way... And the Red Cross are some of the most evil organizations in the world. Doesn't mean if you volunteer for the Red Cross, you're bad in a hurricane. A lot of good folks volunteer. That's their front. About half the money in both groups goes to gun control, teaching your kids all sorts of horrible things in school, open borders, globalism, world government, you name it. And, and, and that's all come out in the news. But I'm already digressing. You give your money to those organizations, you are insane. I told you before it was ever in the news about the Clinton Foundation being an organized crime operation. They're heavily involved with the Bushes. It is despicable when there's a hurricane or an earthquake in Haiti and then the Bushes are up there on TV with Clinton going, give money to our foundations. We're combining our foundations so they can pay for private jets and hotels and houses. I mean, it's a sick joke. I don't care if they paid for jet flights and hotels. But that ought to be 10% of the money. A healthy charity doesn't spend more than 15% on overhead. And that's just a fact. So th that's a good metric right there of a charity. If they're spending 20, 30, 40%, look out.
Now, I've got all this world news, and I'm digressing here. Uh, they are banning in Germany and in Poland and other areas, publicly criticizing wide open borders. That's called living in a dictatorship. You're going to accept millions of people running around screaming, you know, at the top of their lungs, they deserve everything free, carjacking, robbing. I mean, the videos are legion. And if you criticize it, we're going to arrest you. <laughs> Boy, the EU is really free. Associated Press, the latest Polish authorities ban anti-migrant rally. You're migrants. If I want to go to Saudi Arabia, I got to have a visa. If I want to show up and get on welfare there, they'll laugh at you. They're not taking any of the migrants. But if you want to criticize it, they're going to arrest you. And now in England, in the rest of the UK, you try to criticize it, the police arrest you. Oh, what free countries you live in. You are captured by a criminal organization, a mafia, a narcotics, child trafficking, sex trafficking, snuff film trafficking, globalist system. You look into NATO, you look into Interpol, you look into these groups. I mean, they are the worst of the worst. They are specter. They are cobra. I ought to play Jakari Jackson's great intro he did on, on the uh, allegory of cobra in the real world. And I make the point that major newspapers have made jokes out of that I think cobra is real. No, in the video, I say the allegory of cobra is real. Secret organization, in and out of government, arms trafficking, drugs trafficking, money laundering, wearing masks, corporate board meetings, hiding who they are. The globalists always symbolize themselves as a hydra, a snake, an octopus. That's who they are. And so the new movie, James Bond's coming out. It's all about the Vatican and secret societies and Spectre. What do you think the Bilderberg Group and Club of Rome are? They are Spectre. They're beyond Spectre. They've been putting fluoride in the West water for 60 years, knowing it's a chemical warfare agent. They're feeding us GMO. They know creates mass birth defects. They know neurological disorders are up several thousand percentage points. So is type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Breast cancer is up many fold. Lung cancer in women is up seven fold, even though smoking has gone down. Do you have the nerve and the will to investigate and find out this is true? Or do you want to go quietly into the night and basically be exterminated? Because let me tell you, as I've said, you're not in Kansas anymore. This is the real deal. Now, that said, I, I've been trying to think how to quantify this best to explain that our national symbol, our national identity is having chips on our shoulders and racially freaking out and everyone making excuses for what they do because of what class or sex or supposed race they are. And I look at the headlines today, barber shop fined for refusing to cut woman's hair. And they just said, lady, we don't do women's hair. We don't have the curlers. We don't, we don't dye hair. We don't, we just cut hair. And they find them saying it was discrimination. I guess you can't have a fraternal order of men or women. Marine Corps, women in combat experiment gets mixed results. Washington Post. You're not going to have humans in combat soon. That's why they're putting the women in now. They're phasing it out. They're sabotaging the human system. Football players who rammed ref claim he made racial slurs. Folks, I played football in one of the most unracist areas you're going to find, even when I played football, is, is, is the football field where half the people on average are black. I mean, it's just ridiculous. And there's no evidence that, that, that they made these slurs. They physically attacked the ref, speared him in the back, which can kill somebody. And then they're saying that it's because he said something racial.
racial slurs.